Algebra 2, Concept 7b. Graphing quadratics in standard form. Let's get down some vocabulary definitions and formulas. So standard form of a quadratic is the function or equation in the form f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And that is where a, b, and c are constants or numbers and your y-intercept is at the point 0, c. Your vertex is the same as the last concept. It's the highest or the lowest point of a parabola. And we're going to be talking about the axis of symmetry again, which is that imaginary line that divides the parabola in half. It is in the equation form x equals whatever the h value is, which once we find the vertex, it's the x value of the vertex. Again, we're just going to review these definitions from our last concept. So a maximum or minimum is the highest or lowest point on a parabola. The domain is the rule for the x's that give real number outputs, and for a quadratic it's always all real numbers. And the range is a description of all the possible y values. So it will be the rule y is greater than or equal to the k value if your parabola is opening up. Or it will be the rule y is less than or equal to the k value if the parabola is opening down. Now let's graph in standard form. So just like in the other um, concept, 7a, where we were graphing in vertex form, I gave, gave you steps. I have steps here. So the first thing you want to do is look at the equation and anticipate any transformations that you have. So one value that we can look at is the a value. That will let you know if the a value is positive, the graph will be opening up. If it's negative, it will be opening down. And then if it's less than 1, you will have a shrink. If it's greater than 1, you'll have a stretch. And then you'll want to pick out the a, b, and the c value from the equation. Once you do that, then you can find uh, the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So A equals B equals and C equals. And then there's a little formula to find the axis of symmetry. So remember the equation is X equals and so the formula is you take the negative or the opposite of the B value and you divide it by 2 times a. Now what's great about that is that is also the x value of the vertex. So for your vertex the x value is the same as the axis of symmetry. And then to find the y value you simply plug in x into the equation. You can find the y-intercept, so you look at the c value that you have picked out, and that'll be the point, 0, and then whatever your c value is. And then you're going to make a t-chart um, and do what you've done before. So start at the vertex and two values in the negative direction and two values in the positive direction. As you graph, just refer to the steps um, above. So the first thing you're going to do is pick out a, b, and c. So a is 3, that's the number in front of the x squared. b is negative 6, that's the number in front of x, and then c is positive 1. So then let's find the axis of symmetry. So we'll take the opposite of b, so the negative, my pen is not cooperating. There we go. So the negative of negative 6 and then divide that by 2 times 3. So that would give us positive 6 divided by 6 or 1. So our axis of symmetry is 1. So now we also know the x value of the vertex. So we'll go ahead and put that there and then we'll just leave some space to find the y value. So to find the y value we want to plug in 1 to the equation. So that's 3 times our x value squared, so that'd be 1 squared, minus 6 times 1, plus 1. Now you can just plug that straight into your calculator, and if you do that, 
you'll end up getting negative 2, I believe. Yes. So now you know your vertex. So it's just a little bit extra that you need to do that's different from vertex form to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Now everything else is the same. So you place that um, vertex value in the middle of your table and then you're going to go two values in the negative direction and two values in the positive direction. Now plug in each of the values, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 into your equation to find the values of y. So when you plug in negative 1, you will get 10. When you plug in 0, you'll get 1. Plug in 2, you'll get 1. You will get 10. Alright, now we're ready to graph. So negative 1, positive 10. 0, 1. 1, negative 2. Two, one, and three, ten. So we have a graph that's opening up that is definitely a vertical stretch. It is a lot narrower than the parent function. Um, let's sketch in that axis of symmetry, which is right where x equals um, positive one. So we'll just sketch that in. It goes right through our vertex. Our domain is all real numbers. And then our range, since where graph is opening upward, is going to be greater than or equal to. And then we're looking for the y value of the vertex. So to make that graph, all the values that are greater than or equal to negative 2 are used. Let's try another. So we're just going to do that same process over again. So first thing is you're going to pick out your a, your b, and your c values from the equation. So your a value is in front of the x squared, so that is negative 2. Your b value is in front of x, so that's negative 8. And then your c value is positive 1. Now let's jump down and find the axis of symmetry. So that will be the opposite of our b value divided by 2 times our a value, which is negative 2. Well, not wanting to write. There we go. Times negative 2. Okay. So up top we get positive 8 divided by negative 4 which gives us negative 2. That is also our x value of our vertex. And then we'll just leave some space to find our y value. So now to find y, remember we're going to plug that into the equation. So it's negative 2 times, and then I'm putting in negative 2 for x, squared minus 8 times negative 2 and then plus 1. Now you can key that right in your calculator as you see it and if you do that you will get that y is 9. So now we know the y value of the vertex and we can start at the point negative 2, 9. So we'll go negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, 0. Now one at a time plug these x values into your equation and you should get um, that negative 4 will give you 1, negative 3 gives you 7, negative 1 also gives you 7, and 0 will give you 1. All right, make sure you have drawn your x, y axis and labeled it in a scale. So we have negative 4, positive 1, negative 3, positive 7, negative 2, positive 9, negative 1, positive 5, oop, I need to go up one more. And 0, 1. Alright, so now we've got a graph that is, oh, let's sketch in our axis of symmetry. 
So that's that vertical line that goes right through the x value of the vertex. So we have a graph that is a reflection. Um, it is a vertical stretch because of that a value. Our domain is all real numbers. And then our range is going to be y is less than or equal to because it's opening downward. And then it starts at the y value of the vertex, 9. And all the y values that are less than or equal to 9 are used to create that curve. So that's our domain and our range. So now we're going to find a minimum or a maximum value from a quadratic equation. Because the vertex is the highest or the lowest point, that's what you're looking for, the vertex. And sometimes you'll give both the x and the y coordinate, but sometimes it's just the y coordinate that we're looking for, for the maximum or the minimum value. So when you have an equation like number 3, y equals 1 half x squared minus 2x minus 1, to find the minimum or maximum, you're just going to find the vertex. So we'll start out by finding the x value of the vertex, and we'll use that little well. We'll pick out a, b, and c for starters, and then we'll use our little formula. So a is a half, b equals negative 2, and c equals negative 1. And then we'll take the negative of b and divide it by 2 times a, which is a half. So that gives us positive 2 divided by 1 or 2. And now we're going to plug in 2 to our equation. So you can put that straight in your calculator. And if you do that, you will get negative 2. So, whoops, the x value is 2 and then the y value is negative 2. Now I can, I know if this graph is opening up or down by looking at the a value. Since it's positive, it is opening up. So that means that this point is going to be a minimum. We will have a lowest point. The domain <clears throat> will be all real numbers because it always is and a quadratic. And then remember the range we're going to look at, the y value of the vertex. And since it's opening up, it will be greater, no, yes, sorry, greater than or equal to that y value, negative 2. I like this last problem. It's modeling real life. So the graph shows the average units of electricity used in homes compared to the temperature in Celsius. So you can see as the temperature um, increases, well, when the temperature is really low, people are using a lot of electricity. And then when it gets to a nice temperate um, temperature, they're using less electricity. And then as it gets warmer, they're using more. So that's just because they are running their heat when it's cold, not when it's just a nice temperate um, temperature and then when it gets hot they're running their air. So it says is a linear function or a quadratic function a better model? Well I don't know about you but I think this looks like a parabola. We could actually put a nice smooth curve kind of fit it through the middle of these points. And so it is um, quadratic and then it says tell whether the coefficient, that's the number that comes in front of the x squared, should be positive or negative. Well you know that because it's opening up. So that's right. The a value would be positive. If the a value or that coefficient were negative, then it would flip it and it would be opening down. And let's just put that the quadratic is the best. All right, now I think we are to the independent practice. So you want to pause the video and do those practice problems and then come back and check your answers. All right, your graph and your table and values should look like this. So check your answers and see if you made a mistake, if you can figure out, and if not, then ask during the teacher talk. 
check your answers for number two. So finding the minimum or maximum means finding the vertex. So you should have found that the x value of the vertex is negative 2, the y value is negative 19, and because your a value is positive 4, it's opening up, so this is a minimum. Your domain is all real numbers, and your range is y is greater than or equal to 19, negative 19. All right, and lastly, this problem, um, the best model for it would be a quadratic, because if you draw a curve through the points, they're going to go up and then down. Um, and then since it's opening down, it would be negative. It's kind of interesting graph as well. So your happiness level according to the hours slept. So I don't know about you, but when I don't get much sleep, I'm not very happy. And I suppose when I'm feeling down, I sleep a lot. So that graph makes sense. All right, you are now ready to move on.